All right, welcome to part six of the Oliver Project 66 project. Um, air cleaner, I just mounted it. I ran a die down these, so the inside of the stud is coarse thread and the outside is fine, so fine thread nuts. Um, I think I'll have a hose that'll fit here. For this, Most of the time, the original one, well, 60 years old, 70 years old. Um, most of the time, being that old, they're uh, deteriorated or whatever, or just gone. So you could just leave it probably without one. But if you're doing something like straw or something, uh, maybe even threshing where you get straw in the air, or a windy day or whatever, you could get you know, straw to go in here, then all of a sudden it'll get plugged up. Or it'll work its way up, you know, to the bottom here or whatever. Start plugging it up. You could just cover this, but you're losing your surface area. This gives you your surface area. Now what this is, is a drain for a washer, drain screen. Let's see, I think I have one here. Lint snare, aluminum lint, lint snare for washing machine lint traps. There's two of them in here, get them at the hardware store. And that's all you need. It's aluminum, it won't rust. And I'll give you that area that you need. I could probably widen this out a little bit. It does stretch around this, so that works for me. And let's put it on here. Doesn't really need a hose clamp, I don't think. Uh, what else? These bolts. Um, I think it calls for their five sixteenths by three quarter or one. I think it's one inch for the top because you're gonna add the hood to it. Um, I had to cut this one. This was these are three quarters. I couldn't find half. I cut it flush because the fan blade will hit. I get a shot of that. If you don't cut it. So make sure that you don't that you have clearance here for the fan. Otherwise you're gonna get quite the ticking going on. Uh what else? That hose is about the same size as a radiator, I believe. fit on there yeah okay I can either cut this one or I have the straight one for the, the other radiator stuff this is straight hose that would be used on the air side for the water pump here uses two straights I got uh, a big chunk yet and that will fit on here so it's gonna really be a matter of finding hose clamps. I might have some, I don't know. If not, I'll buy some. Yeah, I think that'll work. As long as I can stretch it enough to get it around there. So I gotta do that and do the bolts on the other side. Cut the one shorter. And that'll take care of that. All right, I'm running a uh, die down the the air cleaner cup clamp or the screw, I guess you call it. And uh, it really helps to to do that. You don't have to worry about it binding all the time. And I run it until she bottoms out completely, and then. then she will be good. That's gonna be good already. In case you're wondering about this tap and die set, I recently got this. I needed one. I was tired of borrowing one. That's the gear wrench. Um, how many piece set is it? It's over a hundred piece. 
114. Comes in this nice case. All the taps are up here. Does metric and standard. The nice thing about it is you can do almost any combination of fins with it. You can run your dies in here. With a ratcheting, you know, ratchets both ways. Same handles work for the taps. You put it in like that. You put your tap in. Like that. Kind of like the, uh, any style. Like a normal one. Now you got a ratcheting. Ratcheting tap. And I said it, it can do almost anything. You can run the handle with it, like a regular handle, like this. You know, like that. Or, or you can use these adapters here and you can run it with a ratchet like this and what that means is you can get in a long spot like if you if you're if you got to tap a ways away you can put any mono extension on it so you can get to it so you can use that so a regular ratchet that works pretty good it also can do dies. Same thing, you can put it in here for the die. Same thing. Here you could use your, your T-handle if you wanted to. And do the same thing. Give you adapters for that. Nothing else to say with the tap. So there's really any combination that you can think of, it'll do it. It's got metric and standard. It's a nice set, I like it so far. I just thought I'd show you that. All right, for, I got this on. For oil, I just use the cheapest stuff I had. Just put some cheap, clean, new oil in. That's all you need. I'll put it up to the fill line, which is right there. And that's all you need. And there it is, it's on. So, aside from the hose clamps, I think that is done. Move on to something else. Okay, I'm working on the 66 project here, the hood for it. And what I did is I put a patch in there. The hood patch you get from Corvus. Um, it looks like it's a one size fits all, so it was probably about this long. So I cut it. I just cut it with a tin snips. It's not wasn't easy, but I did it. I I actually painted on the both sides just so it's not doesn't get something in there and moisture or whatever and, and corrode. I should definitely hold it. And that was to fill this hole, hole up where somebody cut to put a straight muffler on it to go straight up. And then it's nice and loud, huh? This part here was broke. If I can set this up here. This part here by the door was broke right here. It was split. 
So she took part of the hood patch, cut a little strip, and then welded it in. I would have cut a longer strip, but I didn't have a longer strip. I only had a small section. The other part was pretty mangled up. But that'll work. It's not like you see it anyway, but now it's it's at least stronger. So now it's double the thickness that it used to be. And it gets a little bit of pressure from the hood when the hood flexes. It makes a little pressure. It shouldn't do much, but more so putting on and off and stuff. So I wanted to show you where this was at right now. So now I'm going to have to... I had to clean all the surface rust off of it. I left it sit too long. Like an idiot. So I am going to have to body fill this part here. And get it nice and smooth. And then this I actually did with the clamp while I was putting that, that hood patch in. The clamp actually dented it here, so I've put a little body fill in there too. Other than that, maybe a little bit here, maybe a couple of the little bleed through from the welds here, like right there. I don't know if you can see it good enough on a GoPro, but I'll kind of show you uh, updates on, on where it's at. Well, at least this way you get to see it before I start filling it and just fix it. Other than that, the hood's in pretty good shape. Pretty straight. Really straight, actually. No crank marks, which is surprising because a lot of people like to whack those things at the crank when they want to start. All right, I was just gonna do this part off camera, but I don't see a lot of people actually showing this in videos. I usually use one of those plastic scrapers. I don't have one, so I'm gonna use this filling wedge. I'll just wipe it off after. Now this stuff is not new. I've had it for a while. I think the last time I used it was on the back wheels of that tractor. And like JB Weld, I think it's a 50-50 mix. This is like, they use more of the compound than, than the hardener. And I think, I can't find the actual ratio, but this says to look at the, the major component container and that doesn't say on here, so that's cool. If I remember right, it's kind of like the more hardened you put in, the, the faster it'll dry. But it still seems to do a pretty... Pretty same job, no matter how much. So if you use too much of this, then you're going to end up just running on a hardener before this is gone. And I like making messes, so... I don't even know how much I'm going to need. I have no idea. And I am not a pro at body work by any means. I'm not a pro at anything by any means. Um. I need more yet. I'm gonna go with that for now. I have to put that cover on after. I'm just going to put a little bit of this in. Because it's a pretty small tube for that big container. 
mix her up. Okay. I'm just gonna wipe it off with this. And that can go bye bye. Because now that that's mixed up, I shouldn't have to mix it anymore. If I'm gonna be using it. All right. Again, I am not a pro. There's probably way better methods methods than what I'm doing here, but I don't have the right stuff either. But I know for like big sections like this, you need to get it flat. So you need, especially when you sand it, you need something fairly long. A lot of people use like a you know a straight edge or a board or something that's long enough with sandpaper or something on it. A sanding block. And then you just kind of keep it flat. I'm thinking right here is going to be a little bit, so I'm going to add some there too. Who knows, I might actually end up liking this wedge. It might be amazing. I'm going to put some here. The trick is to get it to go out, and then you can sand down. When you, once you have a dip, then you can't really do that too much with that. You can't really blend it. So you gotta get it to go out, and then you sand it down from there. So that will be just sanded. And usually it takes several coats to do stuff like this because you have to, you're gonna have like air bubbles and stuff after you sand it. Hmm. That's right, it does have a faster end time. I'm not even gonna get through all this, I don't think. Well, these just had a little bit of. Um, weld pits. Okay, so yeah, now I remember this stuff dries fast. JB Weld, you gotta pretty much leave overnight. This stuff you can do like walk away 15 minutes later, you can sand it and do another coat. Now this isn't gonna be perfect, but, come on, I am doing a tractor here. It's not like a car. I wouldn't even wanna work on a car. It's too, that's too hard for me. It's gonna be yucky. That's gonna have to be done several times. I can see that. I'll just let it dry and then I'll get, I'll kind of clean up whatever, I mean this this should be all done up here, first coat, and then it's kind of like, see how it turns out when it's done. This might be done here, this is going to need more work here, it just is. That part back there under the hood, um, the battery door, I'm not going to worry about because it's not seen. And the paint will cover a lot of it, so that will work. Now, the next 15 minutes, you get to watch it dry. I'm kidding. All right, I figured since I got the welder here and I'm set up, I might as well fix this on the side panel. But here's the question. Here's the dilemma. That is from the steering knuckle, I believe, that wears a hole in it. So I don't really want to put something on that, like, you know, just a patch that's thick. It's going to add thickness to it. It's going to hit more. I wonder if I could bend it in. Out, I mean, out. If I bend it out a little bit, that might help. But I'm not going to just body fill it because I don't think that's going to hold up. I need a backing.
so I'll have to work on that. Here's what's left of the, the hood patch. It's quite mangled, that's because I was bending it away for the to get the tin snips in. You know, because you always get you always get stuck. And you're kind of bending it up so you can keep cutting. This I was testing the welder out on. I knew I wouldn't need this part. I'm thinking something like this. See, it'll cut it. It's just not easy. I'm actually pushing a lot of pressure on my on my leg. I'll just pound it down a little bit, get it flat. The question is, do I want it that thick? I don't think I have much of a choice. Like I said, I can always bend this out a little bit if I can. Just a little bit. You ain't really gonna even see it. But it's just got a little bit of a bowl going out. All right, I'm gonna keep you a little ways away so I don't get spider in the lens. But, I'll show you this part. Cause why not, right? Um, I think I think I'm just going to take this off. And I'll put a couple tacks in there, I think. And then I'll body fill over it. I think that'll work. Uh, here. What was happening on that part there, it was melting away, it was thin. I think I'm gonna put a little bit there yet, maybe there. So I'll do that and we'll come back. All right, so I cleaned her up with the grinder. So it's pretty much flat. So next uh, coat of body filler, I'll throw some on here and I'll get this caught up. And then uh, aside from that, this one isn't bad. This panel should be... What we got going on here? The rest is getting through. I'll have to clean that up again. Maybe it's a good thing I let it sit. Let's do an exposed flaws. Yeah. I'll have to clean that side up. And do her again. Because it got really rusty from. Uh, I was sitting in the basement floor and it was. It got uh, some water on it. And that was never good for it. Here's this side. That should fix that once I fill that. 
and get her smooth. The other one just had some wrinkles on it. I might have to straighten them a little bit and color good enough. It is a tractor. And I ain't a body man. Okay, so here's some progress on this. I worked on this quite a bit to get it any um, imperfections like where the body filler was too tall, too high, or there was an indentation. I don't think you're going to see it on here. And again, I'm not real good at that with body filler and stuff, but it should be decent. I got to run uh, a bit around here. Try and make that a little bit more smooth. And looking at it closely, I think it's pretty good. Maybe sand it with some finer like 600 grit paper or something. And then she'll be ready. It'd be pretty hard to see that. And my paint jobs aren't amazing. They're like 20 foot paint jobs. They look good at 20 feet. Or maybe 50 feet. But. A little paint's better than nothing. Huh? So I got to do now is I got to finish this back side here. I'll put that one here. I got to finish this. So I got, I'm working on her. I got to get the, the rust off of here. Get the inside all in primer. And I'll be that much further. I also noticed with these brackets here, the spout on the left goal, you can see right here, it's broke and here it's broke. So that's why I didn't put primer there. I'm gonna get the, I gotta get my helmet back, holding the helmet, and then I'll, uh, I'll put a little bit of weld on that and fix that up before I finish this here. And then I have another issue I use this tractor on the potato digger to dig my potatoes and it ran well but I do see it's got a a coolant leak here see that but I don't know exactly where it's leaking it would be cool if it was the hose that'd be awesome Guy's dripping down here. Well, not much. It didn't hit the floor yet, but. I wonder if this is tight here. It's tight. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. I think I'll have to look into that before. I get too much further on sheet metal. My dad is straightening one of the grill pieces. So one is here. And that one's pretty good. That one was pretty straight. The other one got whacked by something at some point in its life. And then there's that, which is almost done. Using our coat. But I ain't gonna do much until I see what I gotta do with the radiator there. But it's getting finished up. I don't have to move on to another project. It's probably a winter project. All right, so let's work on this hood. See if I can get the inside cleaned and primed. See the rust is pretty bad. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on that, see if I can get it better.
All right, well, I think I'm gonna end the video here. Um, next time you, when I come back, I'll probably, in the next one, have this fixed. And then hopefully it'll be all green. And hopefully I'll have a solution to the radiator problem. And I don't know if I'm just gonna bring it in and have someone fix it or if I can figure out a way to do it even without taking it out. I know they got stuff you can put in them, but I don't know. I think a lot of that stuff isn't good for the pump and stuff. I don't know. I have to do more research on it. And I'll keep working on the sheet metal and stuff and try and get her buttoned up.